Welcome back to the channel for another bike review. It's a beautiful sunny day here in South Cumbria and today we're going to be taking a look at this. It's a 2008 model Honda CBR Fireblade. <laughs> It's always a pleasure to spend a day with a Fireblade. Without even riding it, you already know it's going to be a quality bike. Ever since the original 1992 Honda Fireblade, uh, Honda have continued to be at the forefront of superbike sales, and that's for good reason. I can personally vouch for the uh, continued theme of build quality and performance that the Fireblade has carried through its 30 year history, as I've been lucky enough to ride and review a few different generation of Fireblade for this channel. The 2004 Fireblade saw a really big change, as that was the first time that the, uh, the model had a 1000cc engine. Uh, this was later refined in the 2006 and 2007 version. This particular model, this particular shape, is always a bike I fancied having a good look at. This new revised shape Fireblade was a little bit marmite when it was first released and not everybody was on board with its new looks. Personally, I thought the uh, RCV inspired bodywork of this bike looks absolutely fantastic. I thought it did back then. I still think it does now, almost 15 years later. The 2006 and 2007 Fireblades, that's the generation before this bike, uh, was arguably referred to as one of the best uh, road-going superbikes of its time. So I guess a really big question is, what's different on this bike over the version that it replaced? The most visible change that we've already touched on is the revised body shape. Um, so this was inspired from the RCV model, and the Fireblade carried this shape from 2008, that this bike is here all the way through till 2016. The next Obvious visual change is the exhaust placement. So up until this point, all 1000cc Fireblades uh, had the exhaust mounted here underneath the tailpiece. Uh, but from 2008 onwards, they moved it down here below the uh, the foot pegs. The goal here was mass centralization, which in basic terms is moving the bulk of the weight to the center of the bike. Obviously this bike has a Yoshimura cam, but the uh, stock four into one exhaust actually had a, a pressure actuated valve inside the exhaust. Um, and this rooted air around different chambers inside the exhaust. This helped to maximise the bike's performance while ensuring it met noise and emission regulations. The engine, it's more compact, it's lighter and it produces a little bit more power than the 2007 version of the bike. The frame, uh, again, it's lighter, it's more rigid. Interestingly, the wheelbase on this bike to the previous generation is exactly the same. However, because the engine is more compact on this bike, it actually allows it to have a longer swing arm. Continuing that theme of being lighter and more compact, we have a revised version of Honda's electronic steam damper hidden up here underneath the tank cover. Two of the key changes really for this uh, generation of Fireblade. Uh, the first one was the introduction of a rather clever slipper clutch. It allows the clutch plates to slip under aggressive downshifts, which is exactly what a slipper clutch is supposed to do. However, this bike actually has a ramp mechanism within the clutch uh, that actually applies pressure to the plates under hard acceleration. The second is the uh, Ignition Interruption Control, or IIC as it's known, uh, that was introduced on this bike. This isn't traction control, but it does work in sort of the same way. And the idea behind it was to minimise drivetrain lash under hard acceleration. So just before we get the bike out on the road, as always, and to see what it's all about, uh, I'd just like to extend a massive thank you to the guys at JD Motors, uh, who've given me this bike today for review purposes. This very bike is currently for sale in their showroom. Uh, they've given us so much support over the last couple of years, so please do go across and check them out. Okay, so first thoughts on the 08 Fireblade. Uh, well, I think the first thing you really notice as soon as you get on the bike is just how compact it feels. Um, I mentioned a little bit about that earlier when we were off the bike, but everything just feels very narrow, very small, very lightweight, but yet it's by no means cramped. I mean, you can see here I've got loads of leg room, plenty of room to move around on the seat. But I did find a little bit necessarily weird, but I mean, when I reviewed the 08 CBR 600, so that's a smaller version, obviously, to this bike, a baby blade as it's often known. A lot of the same technology that's on 
the fire blade then get sort of retrofitted to the the CBR 600 but for some reason on the fire blade they chose not to include a fuel gauge I'm not sure why that is that Yoshimura can sounds fantastic I've only been on the bike for about five minutes and already I'm amazed at just how light it feels. I've often found that, especially litre bikes, when you're going just that bit slower, you know, they're not really moving as they're designed to do, they can feel very heavy, very awkward. It's only really when you get moving does that weight disappear. But on this bike, the weight wasn't there to start with. If it wasn't for the fantastic soundtrack and the insane amounts of torque you would honestly think you're riding a, a 600 or even something smaller it's just so nice to be back out reviewing the bike again had a, a really busy year last year with the channel we reviewed probably a bike, bike a month on average um, which might not seem a lot but obviously this channel at the moment is only operated for fun and it's a surprising amount of work that goes into um, putting these videos together. You've sort of got all the prep beforehand of actually arranging, finding the bike, arranging when it's free. You've got the research side of it, getting all your gear ready, you've then got the actual filming in the day with the bike. And then the most lengthy part is then after that is the editing. So I mean, fortunately it is a process I do enjoy doing but I've had a very busy, very busy year personally this year, so unfortunately I've not really had as much time as I would have liked to spend on the channel. Hopefully that will change soon and I can get back to making more videos more regularly. So just while we're waiting to get going a bit on the bigger roads, good chance to talk about how the bike feels, at these sort of cruising town speeds. And honestly it feels just easy. So, so easy. It's not surging, there's no pulling, it doesn't really want to get going. Seems to be quite happy sat here at 3000 RPM, 40 miles an hour. No worries. You know, some, especially the bigger capacity bikes, they can be quite hard work in town. They're sort of pulling and lurching, they want to get going, they don't want to be going slow. Considering I'm riding around here on a 175 brake horsepower race bike I might as well be on a moped it's that easy to ride but that is what Honda have always been known to do I'm not sure how they managed to do it but they seem to consistently be able to make a bike that is just for everybody you know you could commute on this bike if you lived in the city it wouldn't be a problem if you only used it once every so often to go out for a blast with your mates again wouldn't be a problem if you want to take it to the track it wouldn't be a problem the minute that you blip the throttle it just transforms completely instant torque and even there at the low rpms you know you're not anywhere near where the power starts where we're hovering around now at 4k seems to be kind of the sweet spot of where it really just gets going a little bit and then i noticed that a little bit earlier on the, one of the bigger roads there's a notable step up in power from 4,000 RPM and then there's another one that's I'd say maybe seven or 8,000 RPM I wouldn't say it's like a slap in the face change of power but it is definitely a noticeable shift seems to be a little bit of a trait that to be honest of uh, Honda especially I remember last year when I reviewed the uh, the 2020 uh, Fireblade so the CBR 1000 Triple R um, that was such a, a black and white difference once you passed into the power band. Everything changed. The, that is quick. Quick, quick, quick. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, when I reviewed the 2020 Fireblade, 
that was a, a really noticeable difference once you crossed into the power band the exhaust note changed the it just took off like you wouldn't believe so it's not quite as aggressive on this bike as it as it was on that and i don't mean just in terms of the difference in power i mean actually how that power is delivered one thing i'm a huge fan of is the mirrors so the fireblaze carried the same shape mirror now for quite a while i think even the newest rendition of fireblaze still sports the same or very similar style mirrors for me only criticism with these ones is i don't think they fold which could be a, a deal break if you've maybe got a tight garage to fit into there's not a lot of vibration with them they're very stable you get good visibility they look quite good and the, the turn signals in the back of the mirrors is a really nice touch it's fairly common practice nowadays but back in 08 wasn't something that everybody was doing i do like the attention to detail here on the triple clamps uh, these sort of hollowed out areas here I assume that's to aid in the uh, the weight saving mission Honda was on with this bike but very aesthetically pleasing looks great it's more reminiscent of something you'd see on like uh, an Italian bike like an old Ducati or uh, an Aprilia or something a bit like that so I mentioned a little bit earlier um, I was surprised that the Fireblade didn't have a, a fuel gauge when the 08 CBR 600 did uh, well it turns out it does have a fuel gauge I was completely wrong um, so down where the uh, trip meter is here actually you can press this bottom dial and it will display for you um, in gallon format how much is in the tank uh, so 41.2 gallons and you can cycle through to get miles to the gallon and a few other options in there so yeah nice touch as I did find it a little odd that there wasn't one serves purpose is good enough I think personally, for it to be a super bike that you live with every day, I would favour a, like a graphical representation of what's in the tank, just just like what's on the CBR. To be honest, I, I find that really just you can glance down and instantly see what's inside. Whereas the numerical one, I mean, it's, it's still easy to see, but it takes a little bit more of a glance down to actually read it and look at it. But at least there is one, so yeah, I stand corrected. As is always the case when I do these reviews, it's so limited what you can actually do on the road but for the roads that we've got here in Cumbria they're, uh, they're definitely not favoured towards a motorcyclist bad quality roads, lots of traffic and then on the odd occasion you might get a straight where you could open up a little bit you can be sure there'll be a police camera van there and again usually when I'm making these reviews I'm commenting oh this isn't what the bike was made to do and blah blah whereas in a weird kind of way Honda did make the Fireblade to do just this, you know, it, it is a race bike at its heart but it's been toned down to the extent that it actually is quite happy to just ride that list. I remember when I reviewed the, I think it was the 2004 R1, the bike I'd had a few weeks before that was the 06 Fireblade, so they ran from the same era, same, and they were, they were such different bikes to ride. The Fireblade was very much like this one, easy to ride, comfortable, more than enough power that you'll ever really want, whereas the R1 just wanted to go it was just let's go let's go let's go the whole time which again on the track is fantastic whereas on the road that's not always favorable this model fireblade was revised a couple of times and um, so from 2009 the year after this abs was available on the bike i might be wrong feel free to call me out if i am but i think it could have been the first production thousand cc superbike to feature abs and around uh, 2010 or it might have been 2012 i forget the exact year it was revised again, those components were made lighter, a little bit more power but to be honest by that time the competition had moved on quite a bit and I think the later versions of this generation Fireblade were a little bit behind the competition and that's not to say it's a bad bike, you know, it's it was then and it always will be a fantastic bike um, what I'm talking about is more at the, the top end of what's available, what people might want from a superbike, you know, on the track when they're, they're really pushing to the limits I think Yamaha, certainly BMW, had the upper edge. So we are just here, barely even scratching the surface of what the bike's capable of. But as I mentioned before, the handling is just absolutely fantastic. So light and nimble. That pickup is just incredible. 
I say it's a little bit lazy at the low RPMs, but once you're in that sweet spot, it's to pull your arms out of the sockets. It seems that everyone's got the same idea today, a nice sunny day. Roads are so busy. As I mentioned earlier, luckily the bike is so easy to ride at these lower sort of commuting speeds. And other than the temperature, they're in 105 degrees, it's getting quite hot. Um, but the bike's did a good job of managing that itself. You can hear the fans coming on, cooling the engine down. And with the exhaust being down low, there's no chance of the seat getting hot. Which you know has been an issue previously with bikes that have underseat exhausts. Unintentional seat heaters. So frustrated on the road, it's like you just sort of work your way up in the RPM where the where all the good stuff is and then you just run out of road to use it fortunately that is a bit of a trait of the inline 4 engine is all the power so far up in the rev range which obviously on the track really isn't a problem but on the road especially if you know a bike like this with a noisy can on it by the time you get up to seven eight thousand rpm you know it's absolutely screaming you're getting a lot of attention to yourself just unfortunate that you don't get to experience the majority of what the bike can offer you So the fuel light is flashing, which means it might be a good time to wrap up the on the bike element of this review. Uh, so as always I'll find somewhere a little bit quieter uh, where I can pull over, I'll set the camera back up and I will give you uh, my final thoughts after spending the day with this 2008 model CBR Fireblade. So I've enjoyed spending the day with this bike just as much as I thought I would do. Fireblade has always had a name for a bike being really, really easy to live with uh, while at the same time being massively capable and this bike is exactly that. I think the first thing really to talk about is the bike's handling. It is phenomenal. It's incredibly nimble, it's so light. Um, honestly, it feels more like riding a 600cc super sports machine than a 1000cc litre bike. In stock form, um, the blade suspension is very, very soft. With that in mind, it only proves how exceptional the chassis on this bike is and how much work the uh, electronic steering damper is doing behind the scenes. Of course, the soft suspension settings on this bike was an intentional move from Honda uh, to keep the bike manageable, usable and comfortable on the road. But if you could get this bike to a track with a track-specific tuning setup, uh, it would only improve on what is already really very good. The next thing to talk about is the bike's power. Um, so typical with an inline four machine, uh, the low RPMs are a little bit flat, it's a little bit docile. Um, if anything, that only works to your advantage when you're riding in towns, when you're stuck in traffic. We get to around 4,000 RPM and there's a notable shift in power. Uh, the bike becomes a lot more lively, a lot more responsive. Um, and it'll pull hard all the way to about seven, maybe 8,000 RPM when you're then hit with another big noticeable step up in power. Um, and that'll pull you hard all the way to the red line. As you would expect with a Honda, everything is well engineered, everything is built to last. Honda have always been known to build reliable products and this bike is no exception to that. There isn't really much in ways of equipment or rider aids other than the, uh, the slipper clutch and the IIC system that we talked about before. In a way, this bike is the swan song of the, uh, the last of the analogue superbikes before everything went digital and uh, everything was electronically controlled and all the assists that you get on the modern era of Superbike. What don't I like? Um, this specific bike isn't in stock colours. 
um, and it has these um, Playboy inspired colour schemes. Now this is clearly a nod to the French rider Randy de Bunier and his LCR Playboy Honda. If I'm honest they don't really do it for me. Uh, I have heard reports that this model of uh, Fireblade does have a tendency to eat oil. That's not really a problem as such, it's just something to be aware of if you own or if you're looking at buying a 08 to 16 Fireblade. Later generations of this model Fireblade, so from around say 2011, um, it did start to fall behind a little bit in terms of having the performance edge when we had bikes like the uh, BMW S1000 double R coming onto the scene. But even so, it was and it always will be an incredibly capable machine. If you're in the market for something fast, something reliable, something easy to live with, and most importantly, something that's just as much fun on the road as it would be on the track, I would strongly suggest you consider looking at this generation of Fireblood. Thanks so much for watching. If you made it this far, please do pop a like on the video down below and consider subscribing to the channel for more superbike content. It really, really does help us out massively. Please don't forget, this very bike is for sale at JD Motors here in Cumbria. A massive thank you to them once again. But that's all for now. Take care. I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.